evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. And thank you to all these wonderful and courageous young authors. You look fantastic. So I just wanted to say a few words. This has been a wonderful tradition here at LES for so many years. So I want to also thank the parents that pull it all together. We couldn't do this without you, and it's such a lovely opportunity for our students. Um, here at LES, we teach our students to embrace a growth mindset. And that basically means we emphasize that growth takes place by embracing new challenges and trying new ways of doing things, persisting through setbacks, and learning through our successful and not so success successful experiences. And I have to tell you, I can't think of a, a better way to go through that and to develop a growth mindset than to go through the writing process. The idea of drafting and editing your own work and finally publishing a piece is so important for these young learners. And they work so hard. And tonight is a celebration of their success. And um, we are also celebrating Read Across America this week at LES. So it's perfect timing because we look to authors like Dr. Seuss, whose birthday is tomorrow, and we're celebrating that, um, to inspire and to inspire our students and to inspire their creativity, which I think you'll hear tonight. So our first reader tonight is Isabel Mann. Um, I wrote a poem about my teacher. Um, Miss Miller is marvelous and awesome and intelligent. She is a great teacher. She is kind, magnificent, and fun. Is the best. Loves her class. Loves her cat. Enthusiastic, respectful. That is what I think about her. But there are many more good things I have to say. But that would take all day. <laughs> Our next author is Devin Hunter. I wrote a story about balls having a conversation at a store. One Saturday morning, I went to the store where they only sold balls. As they went in, it was very quiet. After a while, I heard them chatting. I looked around to see if anyone was there, but no one was there. Then I looked around and saw some balls with eyes, nose, and mouth. I knew in an instant they were talking balls. Then I started to listen closely. Basketball was saying, I like when they drill me, but when they shoot me in my house, for some reason I keep on falling out. Someone fix my house! Football was saying, the Nike shoes are cool, but when they hit you, it ain't cool. Pink ball ball was saying, you guys always remind me of negative things. You remind me of bad times. Volleyball was saying, whenever I'm in the game, I feel like I'm in the beach except there's no ocean. Cricket ball was saying, I have a lot of stitches on me after cricket ball. Tennis ball was saying, I like when I fly through the air, yeah, but when they smack me like I'm a mosquito. And then I heard the, pit, the ball pit ball whispering, our life is wonderful, is wonderful. We never again complain or, or miss the excitement. We are happy with those dumpy babies. The Little Sinker. Once there was a girl named Victoria. She was in the bathroom. She was also sinking. Then Tanya heard Victoria. When Tanya went in, she said, you should be a singer. Victoria said, I should be a singer. Then Victoria continued singing. When she practiced, she got better at singing. So one day, she was brave to go on that stage. Then she started singing. The more she had concerts, the more famous she got. She was on newspaper. She got more fans. She was happy every second she sang. The end. And next author 
sponsor is Anushka. Do not eat the donut part two. Last time on Do Not Eat the Donut, Jenna's dog Baxter saw the donut. So let's get right back into the story. Baxter saw the donut. Uh oh, suddenly Tina saw Baxter. Tina lifted Baxter up. The donut was safe. Jenna came running in the room. Baxter, what are you doing? Jenna yelled. She was very surprised. Tina let Baxter go back to playing in the backyard. Finally, Tina and Jenna decided they should split the donut in half. The end. Our next author is Ken K. Hill. This is about the bossy, the bossy penguin king. One day there was a penguin. The penguin was called the king of all the penguins. The king was being really mean to the other penguins. He would say things, give me some food, make me an egg roll. So one of the penguins said to another penguin, I'm going to tell to the king, stop being so mean. Later that day, the penguin said to the king, hey king, stop being so mean. <coughs> then the penguin left. The king thought about that all all night long. He didn't realize he was being so bossy. So the next morning, the king was really nice to everyone. The king apologized and thanked the pen thanked the penguin that said, Stop being so rude. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Our next author is Charlie. <laughs> hey. My name's Bob. I like to dad. I have a brother named Fluff. How you, hey, Fluff, how are you doing? <laughs> hey, wait. I'm good. Hey, Bob, what are you doing this afternoon? Oh, I'm going to the arcade with my friend. What? <laughs> <laughs> He's really cool. Hey, what are you doing with what? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the arcade. We're going to play a lot of games. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bob, can I... Wait, yeah. Hey, Bob, can I come? Sure, Wubs. Can Fluff come? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. We can go. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, that was awesome. Let's go home. Hey, Bob, let's watch TV. And then Wubs came over and said, Hey, can I have TV with you guys? Sure, Wubs. The end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next author One day, his best friend Blobby moved. So then his other best friend, Pinky, moved. So then he was all lonely until he met a gorilla named Chuck. <laughs> um, he liked he liked pink ice cream, <laughs> which is purple Chuck. <laughs> So he wore purple nerd glasses, so that they started to hang out. But then they didn't like each other, so he found another blobfish named Bob. So they started to hang out and became best friends. But Chuck was out of lunch, so he shriveled up in a hole. <laughs> so he shriveled up in a hole and stayed there for a million years. The end. <laughs> I was 
having a normal day. I ate breakfast normally, and I got dressed normally. I was going to see Winter and Hope. They're dolphins. Then I went to the other creatures. Seals, dolphins, and turtles were some of them. Finally, I came to the stinger exhibit. That was normal, too, for a little bit. Someone must have touched the wrong part of it, because the next thing I knew, I was soaked. The stinger splashed and splashed and splashed. I was so wet that my mom thought I fell into the water. Bob the Wrestler. John Cena retired and wanted to dance with the hula ladies. Now the wrestling federation needed a new gym. So they did a competition to find him. Bob, one of the contestants, dug to the earth's core with his bare hands. He ruled for many years as champion. One day he was going for a jog, but he, he ran so fast he accidentally ended up on exoplanet Pluto and was never seen again. To remember Bob, President Joe Stigito said, we shall turn the Statue of Liberty into the Statue of Bob. The end. <laughs> The bear and the rabbit. Once upon a time, there was a bear named Brownie. He loved to eat raspberries. Also, he loved to eat leaves and flowers. Brownie did not have any friends. He was alone. But one day, a rabbit came to the bear and said, Can I play with you? Brownie was so happy that he had uh, made a new friend. Then all day they were playing together. They were best friends forever. Then. Once upon a time, there lived a turtle and a cat. They were best friends. The cat said, "Let's go to the." They got what it was too muddy. Then they went to the house and played their favorite game, the end. True to heart, he or she should always do their part. True friends can have fights at the start, but they should not end up being apart. True friends can have fun riding a go kart or eating tart. Do you think you have a true friend? You probably do, but think it through. It's not about who's good at art or who's more smart. True friends don't worry about race or religion or wonder when they might depart. What really matters is the love and kindness in each other's heart. Our next author is Tanvi Madden. My title is The Legend of the Magic Backpack. Once there was a backpack, if anyone touched it, they could pull out anything they wanted. So one day, a girl named Jessica saw the... There was a backpack randomly on her front porch. Jessica said, what is this, and why is a backpack on my front porch? She thought it looked pretty, so she took it to her room, and when she opened the backpack, surprisingly, some, surprisingly there was a binder in it. When she opened the binder to the first page, it said, congratulations, you found the magic backpack. It also said, if you want anything, think of it and pull, it, pull the, out the item you asked. Jessica was really happy because she found the backpack. She was also a bit hungry, so she wanted a donut. And kaboom, it was in her hands. Would you want to ask anything? Bob's lucky day. Once there's a young boy named Bob. Bobby was 
watching his favorite TV show called SpongeBob SquarePants when he heard an ice cream truck. He was so excited. He found $3.99 in the couch. An ice cream costed $4. He was one cent off. He looked and looked but didn't find one single cent. So he did not know what to do. He thought and thought until he started to look outside for a penny. He didn't find one so he checked in on the neighbor's yard and found one. And he finally, he gets a strawberry ice cream. He went back home to eat what his favorite Put on, to put on his favorite episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, so he watched the ice cream. So he watched what the ice cream melted. Then Bobby realized that he, ha- he has ice cream in his fridge. So he goes to the fridge, gets the ice cream, eats it first, and then watches SpongeBob SquarePants, and is very happy. The end. Author My story is about a villager. One day there was a villager. The villager's name was Phil. Phil went to the pool along with the other villagers. There was a fire near the pool. Someone was having a barbecue. Phil heard people screaming and saying, fire! Then Phil grabbed the water in a bucket and threw it on the fire. The villager thanked him and said, thank you for rescuing me and my sons. Then Phil Phil went home. There were five robbers who escaped jail. They were, they were going to rob a bank in Phil's village. Phil said, this is a bad thing. What are we going to do? The villager said, let's catch the robbers. So Phil and the villagers went to the bank to catch the robbers. Then they had a fight with the robbers. Phil beated all the robbers and the villagers helped him. So they all felt happy and said, all hail Phil. Then they walked back to the village. Phil saw someone panicking. A villager said, where is my baby? A stranger took the baby. Phil said, I'll bring your baby back. He beated the stranger and brought the baby back. The dad said, thank you, the end. I wrote one, the lottery story. Once upon a time, there was a family with a mom, a dad, a little boy, and a high school girl. The mom and dad walked, and the two kids went to school. They had a happy life. One day, the dad went to the grocery store. He came back with the lottery ticket. They were super happy and started to discuss what they would buy if they wanted. The mom said, I will sign my kids up for more after-school classes and lessons. They replied, we already have too much to do. The dad said, I will send them to a fancy boarding school. They replied, we like where we are. The boy said, I'm going to quit school and buy a room filled with video games and play all day. The mom said, no way. The sister said, I will quit college and travel the world alone. The mom replied, absolutely not. They all had a disagreement with each other. The next day, they found out they did not win. Well, at least we didn't win, they said. They went back to their normal life. Uh, Next author is Shania Shrost. My title is Big Fat Indian Wedding. Have you... Have you ever been to a big, fat Indian wedding? I was lucky to attend one in January this year. It was my aunt's lovely wedding. The countdown to the wedding started when we booked our tickets almost 10 months ago. I brought dresses and shoes for many events before the wedding. We took a 16-hour flight to reach India. We had eight people to receive the four of us. The next few days, We planned every detail, like flowers, lights, and food. We stayed at our maternal grandparents' apartment, along with 10 other close family members. The three days leading to the wedding were so much fun, singing, dancing, and even playing Uno. Can you guess how many people attended the wedding? 800 people. The wedding was beautiful, and I was the flower girl. 
I came back with wonderful memories and a better, a better understanding why Indian weddings are big and fat. <laughs> The title is Pusheen and Stormy's What? Um, Pusheen and Stormy are sisters. They don't have much in common. Pusheen likes to eat a lot, and Stormy likes to go on adventures. But today they decided to go on an adventure, so they set off to Hamburger Mountain. Yo, said Pusheen. She was delighted to see a giant hamburger right in front of her. Mmm, said Stormy. Stormy thought so too. So instead of the mountain, they climbed the hamburger and started eating it. As they were finishing, somebody yelled, Hey, where did Hamburger Mountain go? Now, instead of a huge hamburger, it was just a slice of lettuce. So they huffed and puffed down from the lettuce. Stormy apologized. Stormy apologized. So I guess they did both, eating and adventure. But Bushin said, Grr, which meant, let's not do that ever again. So they decided that their next adventure waiting for them was their comfy, cozy, fluffy, purple, and snug couch. Tonight's, tonight's first author is Madison Amato. A hand and his mother. Hairy hand and his mother lived in Handy Town. They went to the Handy Restaurant for lunch. Here we had single mini potatoes. His mother had an apple and pie. For dessert, they had wing pops. After lunch, they went to the Candy Town Park and played handball at the end. Two happy rabbits. There 
was a happy rabbit named Emma. She had a friend named Sarah. Emma always hopped to her best friend's house to play with her. After that, she rushed back home to do her homework. At home, she ate some grass, she brushed her teeth, and went to sleep. The next day, Emma woke up and ate breakfast. She put on her backpack, put on her hat, she put on her shoes, she hopped in her, her bus. went to school with her best friend Sarah. They both sang a song. The song's name was We Were a Happy Rabbit. What a happy day. The end. Our next author is Katie Haggerty.
Um, next we have from the first graders, Sorrel Beach.
goes to the ghost glide on the half pipe. Then he does the triple cork on the half pipe. Then he does the back side on the half pipe. Then he does the back side triple cork on the half pipe. Now he won the gold medal. Our next author is Mason Glauberman. Pokemon card. There. <laughs> Wait, I'm a little laughing. Wait. <laughs> Pokemon cards. There are many types of Pokemon. There are there. <laughs> and Mega. Wait a second. The X is in Mega. There are foil cards and legendary Pokemon. There are shiny Pokemon cards. There are shiny Pokemon cards. There are free Pokemon cards. There are rare Pokemon cards. Pokemon are strong. My favorite Pokemon is Pikachu. Our next author is Connor Harrison. Dee Dee's dad was playing goalie. 
somebody from the other team was about to score, but luckily Baby Stack saved the ball. The score was 10 to 2. Then the Philadelphia Penguins scored again. The crowd went wild. Now the scoreboard said 11 to 2. The Philadelphia Penguins had won the game. Our next author is Ronan Huar.
rainbow town. Once upon a time, there was a rainbow town. Cats and fish every size live there. Cats are faster than mice in this world. And just to mention that they are not in an ordinary town. It is a rainbow town. Cats play with yarn and fish play with bubbles. Cats and fish are nice to each other in this town. Yeah, cats and fish are nice to each other. <laughs> Our next author is Valeria Sullivan. Friendful friends, once upon a time there were a piggy bank, a purse, and a cactus standing on a shelf. Piggy bank was happy and loved eating points. Purse was sad because everyone took money from him except his friends, Piggy Bank and Cactus. The Cactus was very smart. He learned how to read books and how to write. Cactus told something to the Piggy Bank, then the Piggy Bank gave some money to the purse. Purse was happy. Thank you, Piggy Bank. For the coins, said the purse. You are welcome, said Piggy Bank. Cactus said, You are all coins now. Thank you for the great idea, said the Piggy Bank. Our next author is Alec Wang. Among infinite signs, infinity flower grows infinity centimeters, never blooming. Reaching for sunlight from flowery stalks. Kishan Sai. Last year we had a solar eclipse on August 21st, 2017. I was very excited and was waiting for that day. My sister and I made five pinhole cameras to look at the solar eclipse. It was amazing. I really liked it and my family liked it too. I got special glasses. I got to see the sun with the glasses. The sun was golden yellow and was crystal shaped. I was watching it and then it became smaller and smaller. Then it came back to normal. The solar eclipse lasted for two hours. My family and I loved that day. The path of totality was 70 miles from Oregon to South Carolina. This eclipse happened once in 99 years. Next author is Ryan Seymour. The title of my book is Jackpot. It was written for the first game. Four friends were so excited to play Jackpot. It was a cool game. Dad threw the ball and I caught it, so that made me the Jackpot. What would happen if you stepped on Buster's tail? 
and two steps on Buster's tail, would he scream and roll fire on his, um, out of his mouth? <laughs> would he look sad? Would he look a mess? Would he tell on you to make his walking? <laughs> I think that Lester would cry, and I would feel bad for him. So I would feel, so I would give him a hug to make him feel better. Lester is the best, and nothing but the end. Well, thank you for joining us tonight at Young Authors Night, and thank you to all these wonderful, courageous young authors. I'm so happy that you're doing this tonight. Um, just a quick, just a few words before we start. You know, at LES we teach um, our students to embrace the growth mindset, which emphasizes um, growth that takes place by embracing challenges and trying new things and persisting through setbacks and learning through successful and not so successful experiences and I can't think of a better way to practice that than by going through the writing process. So drafting and editing your own work and then finally publishing your piece, it's so important for these young learners to, um, to do and they've worked so hard. So it's so important that we celebrate their efforts tonight. We also at LES are celebrating Read Across America Week in honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday, which is tomorrow. And so the timing is perfect because we look to authors like Dr. Seuss to inspire us to be creative writers. And you're going to hear a lot of creativity tonight, I think. So thank you for coming. And let's hear a big round of applause for our young authors. Thank you. 
girl who loved the woods. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who loved the woods. She wanted to go for years, but she never could because back then girls were not expected to go outside and get dirty. One day when she was 11, she said, I'm going to the well, but she went to the woods with a cat. She found a very injured bear. She tried to help, but he died in her arms and has been there in the woods ever since. Until we got a new puppy. We drove to Pennsylvania to get a puppy. Her name is Poppy. Her fur is wet, her head is brown. There is a little brown circle near the tail. She is a peekaboo. She is tiny. She looks like Zeke. Her baby teeth are going to fall out. She likes to chew stuff. She is 12 weeks old. Her father is a poodle. Her mother is a peekaboo. Poppy can fit under the couch. She likes to play with balls. She likes to drink water. Alright, now we have Andrew Dober. <laughs> My name is Andrew Dober. My 2 MC. The Seed Adventure. One day in Minecraft, Steve the Warrior was planting crops. His mouth hung open when he used the last seed. Oh no, without the seeds, I can't grow my food. Steve ran into the forest to find seeds. Near some, pre near some trees, he found a mysterious pressure plate in the dirt. He stepped on it and accidentally activated a trap door that led to an underground mine. Steve went inside to take a look. He saw sparkles in the distance. They were, 20, so they were 64 emeralds and 24 diamonds, but Z-E-R-O seeds. Just when Steve was about to give up, he spotted something, something bright, something even more valuable, a packet of seeds. Steve put the, put, Steve put the see, Steve seeds in his pocket and headed home to Minecraft. When Steve hit the sack that night, he felt very relieved that he found his seeds and got a good night's sleep. The end. Are you deaf? There is no such sport as football. The next 
Sunday, taking the dish bag with Waddle, Shiny, Nate, Fuller, and Kyle to the same house to watch football, and they really liked it too. They made a team called the Archers. They were happy with their team. The next day, they had a practice. They were hard. They were hard every day. Then one day, they had a game in 144 to 30. They had another game in 113 to 3. They had a great senior season and lived happily ever after. Go the artist, the end. Pancakes and drinks. 
named Mel for breakfast. At 11, Isabella's mother came to pick her up. At 1, they were at home playing Isabella's supper party. The end.
My name is Anika Sharma. I'm in second grade and today I'll be reading Amy and her dog. Once upon a time there lived a girl named Amy. Amy loved dogs and fishes. It was Amy's eighth birthday party. Her mom got the dog for her gift. She loved to play with the dog. She fed him and walked him every day. One day, Amy's dad told her that they were moving to a new city. After moving, she was happy because she made new friends. Amy was so busy playing with her friends that she forgot all about her dog. All about her dog. He was so sad that he ran away. When Amy went home, she could not find her dog. So she called her boss and said, I cannot find my dog. So Amy and her friends went to the forest, but they could not find him. So they made posters to hang up on the streets. After three days, he found, she found her dog. She was very happy that end. Going to Lost Man by the Lynch Eater. Jack wake up, I'm coming mom. Then Jack got dressed, went downstairs, and ate breakfast. Then walked out the door. He got to the bus and saw a path that was made of socks. He liked the adventure, so he followed the trail. He walked for two minutes, then stopped. His eyes widened in surprise. He saw piles and piles of lost objects. Lost, flip flops, stuff. Then he smiled, he moved his face. His lost stuff funny from when he was just in the train of stuff. That was lost in the day was sitting on the top of the road. He ran up, put the socks on his face, and said, I'm a bunny too, and hugged his bunny. Then he heard his mom call, we're going to be late for the bus. He opened his eyes and realized it was just a dream. But he was happy to see that his bunny was right there. I am in second grade. I wrote the story called The Girl Who Made the Tree. There once was a girl named Ashley. Ashley loved to climb a tree that is in her backyard. She would sing to the tree and sometimes the tree would sing back to her. One summer day, Ashley decided she wanted to build a tree house for her and her friends. Ashley turned the tree house into a beautiful tree and it became the favorite spot where all of the children played. The treehouse would even sing their favorite songs. Ashley and the tree would chat them for us. Guys, this concludes our second grade young authors